have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Come on, everybody, begin to clap your hands and let's praise the Lord. The Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more heartache. This is the day I've got joy. I've got joy.
welcome to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. I am grateful the Lord has blessed us with another day to lift up his holy name. I want to greet you in the name of the Lord. We send a shout out to our producer and visionary, Kimmy, Kim, Kimmy Robinson, God bless you. To all of you, our Elation Radio listeners, we say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time out to listen in to today's podcast. And we are thankful for you. We love you on today, and we want you to know we appreciate you. I want to say hi to all of our Elixir Radio and Magazine family, as well as to my husband, Pastor Donald Wright, Jr. Listen, the greatest guest of all is with us, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd just like to give a great Shout out to him for doing all he has done and all he is going to do in and through our lives. I am excited about God. And on today, we have a very, very, very special podcast, which I'm grateful for, with two blessed women of God, Regina Webb and Dr. Kanoi. Tamika Nicole, Tamika, <laughs> Dr. Kanoi, Tamika, bless you, woman of God. I'm going to get through it. And these women of God are going to set your soul on fire with their testimonies and their life. And before we have them come, we're going to have our exhortation. And listen, I don't know about you, but in today's society and time, we need a Savior. We need a God that will hear, that will save, that will deliver on today. I am extremely excited that he's in my life, and I know for those of you that have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, he's in your life too. What a mighty God we serve. I'm really excited that he is with us on today. I want to just share a few things with you on today. Today we are going to be talking about when the king calls. Let me say our topic again today is when the king calls. And we're talking about the king of kings and the Lord of lords. But before we begin, we want to start with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you thanking you for this day, this hour, this time you've allotted us. Thank you for the days ahead. Thank you for all that took place prior. Thank you for what you will do afterwards. We ask you to come in, have your divine will and way, show up and show out. Bless the listeners. You know their hearts, their minds, their spirits, all that they need, all that they are just believing you for and trusting you to do in their lives. I pray for our visionary and CEO, uh, Kendi Robinson, our relation family, my husband, Pastor Donald Wright. Bless these women of God. Lord, we ask that you touch their businesses, their minds, their hearts, their spirits, their families, their ministries, oh God. If you will, we believe you have something in store for each of them. And we thank you for them joining us on today. And, Father, whatever anyone stands in need of, we are linking our faith with them that you will hear and answer prayer. We thank you for the love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for joy. God, on today, we ask that you forgive us all of our sins as we forgive others. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, as we said, we're going to speak about when the king calls. I don't know about you, but most of us have cell phones. And when our phone rings, we have the option to answer it or not. 
But in today's society, it is vital to have a form of communication if you choose to answer that you can answer right away. So let's start with as a preface to what we're going to talk about. Today, subject matter, when the king calls, we will use as a scriptural reference sixth chapter of Isaiah. That's the sixth chapter of Isaiah. We'll be studying from the New International Version, and it will read as such. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling one to another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. Did you catch that? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean clean lips, and my eyes have seen the thing, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. He said, Go and tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding, be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of this people callous, make their ears dull, and close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and turn and be healed. Then I said, for how long, Lord? And he answered, until the city lie ruined and without inhabitants, until the houses are left deserted, and the fields ruined and ravaged until the Lord has sent everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken. And though a tent remains in the land, it will again be laid waste. And but as the terabit, an oak leaves stump when they are cut down. So the holy seed will be the stump in the land. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. What is the Lord saying? Have you looked around recently? I don't know about you, but when I look into the community, when I look around in environment, there are people with unclean lips. There are people that see, but don't see. They hear and they can't hear. They are perceiving. 
believing nothing of the Lord. I believe because Isaiah knew that the Lord, he saw him high and lifted up, that his life with the unclean lips he had could no longer be the same. Is there a place in our life that the things that the enemy has imposed on us, the things that we may have attached ourselves to, the things, whether known or unknown, whether you were church or unchurched, whether you understood or didn't understand, the angel of the Lord, the seraphim, took a live coal and put it upon his lips. I want to say today, thank God for the live coal that comes and touches our lips spiritually that we can deliver what he wants us to say. That doesn't apply to just preachers and teachers. That applies to all who carry this gospel. The world around us is dying. The world around us has no peace. The world around us has no productivity in the Lord. It has nothing that proclaims his name unless we're connected to it. I want to ask you today, who are you, let me ask you again, who are you connected to? Is your worship one that cries out, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty? Listen, in our everyday life, we live, we move, and we have our being in the Lord. But if you don't know the Lord, you do not know all of the benefits attached to his name. For those in business that sign contracts on a regular basis, the contract has a Binding agreement that this is what you will receive should you sign your name. Today, as believers, we have signed our name to be a part of a binding agreement that includes salvation, that includes protection, that includes provision. It includes a wealth of things because we're connected to the King of Kings. So when the king called, as we began at the beginning to say, our preface said that if we have a cell phone, and most of us do, we can look at the screen when a call comes through. We have two choices there. One is to answer. The other is to decline the call. I hope somebody's catching me today. The Lord is calling his people in such an, this isn't your regular traditional people. This isn't the one that is going to follow the religious acts and roles. These are the people that will be the stump, the foundation for somebody else to receive him that he can be glorified. My question is, is it going to be you? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be you? Because in this hour, we don't want to see our families left behind. We don't want to see our friends left behind. We don't want to see leaders left behind. This is a time of intensity and prayer. And to understand that the king of kings is high and he is lifted up. And he is worthy of all of our praise. So on today, I wanted to just take the time. To help us to remember, oh, we were a people of unclean lips. We are a people that have to go through various trials and tribulations. But to be reminded that the live coal has taken away our sins. The live coal represents us that we have been forgiven. And if you've been forgiven on today, you have much to shout about. I don't know about you, but just the thought of he loves us, just the thought of as we are, just the thought of he is wooing us, he is loving on us for such a time as this. The question is, just like those two options, 
Are we loving him back? Are we as Isaiah was in that day? There was all kinds of confusion and chaos around. And listen, can you imagine being the one, my God, that has to announce the chaos? Can you imagine being the one assigned to warn and to let people know this is the appointed time to be saved? I know you've been saying, I'm going to get myself together. I know you've been pleading that, Lord, I just am not right. I need to get saved. But this, I say, is the time. Why? Because this world is coming to a fleeting end. The signs are in the Bible. And for those that don't know the Lord, for those of us who do, we are to be a loving example and an example to tell them this is the time. Perhaps a family member has been on your heart. Maybe it's been someone that God dropped in your spirit. I want you to make sure you take heed. Answer the call. The Bible says he has to say, whom shall I see? And who will go for us? Are you a representative? that he can trust to fulfill his will and enlarge the kingdom. I am convinced in this day, no matter what business we're in, no matter what ministries we have, no matter what churches we attend, no matter where our leadership takes us, at the end of the day, whom shall I see the Lord said? And who will go for us? My prayer is for us all that believe and stand on this gospel to say, Here am I. Send me. What does that mean? Lord, you can have all that's on the inside of me to use as you will for your glory. Whether I'm in my house, in my neighborhood, in my church, in my community, in my job, wherever I may be, that you have full access to me, that your name will be made famous. That is what God is calling for. That is what he is needing. And the reality is, it should be with sincerity and humbleness that whether cameras are rolling or whether finances are included or whether, whatever your heart is, is going to come out. But what I'm a firm believer in He rewards those that diligently seek him. That is that we access and we evaluate who we are and where we've been and what God has done for us and is doing for us in our lives. We act, we evaluate the cost. And we make an informed decision as the binding agreement would say by Simon that we concur and we agree and we are bounded to the agreement to follow his will. And in doing that, I promise you, you can't go wrong. He makes everything better. Isaiah found out even in his difficult assignment that 
everything was better because he was able to see the Lord high and lifted up. My prayer for you today is that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that he will fulfill in you, that have agreed to go with him all the way. Losses all the way. Things that come up to have you misunderstood all the way. Things that cause you to be separated and isolated all the way that when he sends you, he can depend on you because of your gift. I pray this week's exhortation has been a blessing for you, that it challenges you, and it helps us to remember, no matter what we're around, who we're around, that he is with us. And what he did for Isaiah, he can do for you or me. And when he does it, he says this in verse 7, B, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Your sin is atoned for. I want you to be encouraged and strengthened on today to know that the Lord loves you, he cares about you, and we're trusting him all the way. If you don't know him, it's not too late to get to know him. Trust him. He has a plan for your life. And he's able to do anything but fail. I thank you so much for joining us on today and for being a part of this week's exhortation. When the King Calls. What a blessing it is to study the Word of God. Now, listen, we have come to the wonderful part of sharing through wonderful guests that will share with you their testimony, their life, how their faith has affected their businesses and their walk. And yet, what makes their gift, what makes their anointing stand out because of their faith in them? I'd like to begin with a very, very wonderful young woman. She's an alumni. So, Candy, we have you Diddy in the house. I'm so excited she is with us on today. A wonderful woman, a Houston realtor, and a nationwide financial consultant. I'd like to introduce to some and present to others, none other than Regina Webb. I'm getting these names today. Brigina Webb is with us in the house today. May God bless you on today, my sister. Are you there? Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Well, we're waiting on her. I know that we've given those informations over, so they may be connecting her in. Brigina, are you with us on today? All right. We're going to move to our next guest, Dr. Kanoi Tamika. How are you on today? This is a wonderful woman of God. She is a prophetess, a psalmist. She is also a traveling minister. We're excited about her on today. And listen, she has much to share with us. So, Dr. Kanoi Tamika, are you with us? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Amen. Hallelujah. We're so grateful you are with us on today. And listen, we're excited about what the Lord is doing for you in your life. Can you share with the listening audience, for those who may not be familiar with you, with who you are 
and share with them what the Lord has laid on your heart and about the gifting that God utilizes for your ministry as well as business. Amen. Well, first of all, I want to say that I'm saved by grace through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Um, definitely, uh, the Lord has definitely saved me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Um, I, I was mm-hmm. not brought in church, uh, but the mm-hmm. Lord saved me. by I didn't have parents to take me to church. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. But God, by snatched me out of the darkness of the world. And he gave me his light, and he gave me his salvation. Um, and now that he saved me, that uh, I'm now one of his traveling ministers of the Lord, uh, you know, preaching in different cities and, and things of that nature by his grace. Um, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'm also called to ministry, uh, loving to cast out devils. <laughs> Come on. And, um, Come on. <laughs> in Jesus' name. And um, I love God with all my heart. I love to do the work of the ministry of Christ, uh, whom called me to do it. All righty. And you know what? I want you to share with the listening audience recently. You have this wonderful listening party. Can you talk to us about your CD that you have that is um, in our what? what God is doing with you for the work that he's called you for as a psalmist. Can you talk to the listening audience about that? Well, well, here's another grace that's upon my life. I was not born a singer. Hallelujah. Mm. I was born a worshiper. Hallelujah. And so that being said, about 15 years ago, Scott said a prophet from out of town to tell me you were going to do an album. And I smiled in my Mm. heart because I wanted to to the Lord even though I didn't have the singing voice. So what God did was train me to be a prophetic, uh, a declaration, uh, apostolic uh, uh, singer who decree, uh, uh, you know, the word of God over people who will, uh, the Bible says, sing songs of the Lord and songs of deliverance. And so God uh, mm. blessed me uh, and anointed me to do uh, songs that will be declaration and to move you to your next level. Mm. Mm. And how important is it? You know, you mentioned something there that is so important as believers. And you said two things. One, you weren't raised in the church, but yet God found favor to do for you what he does for all of us when we accept him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. He opened the door for you to serve him as you got to know him. And I know that process is a uh, difficult process process, but yet it's worked it, amen? And so seeing the process from the beginning when he called you to now that you have this uh, beautiful melodic voice that he's giving you to reach the masses, to hear his voice and to sing of his praises, tell us about what encourages you to continually go on and being used by the Lord. As we heard with Isaiah, there are difficulties all around us. What encourages you to stay pressed in before the Lord and not give up? Um, well, I'm grateful, first of all, to, to have his salvation and his praise um, because I mm-hmm. know where I came from that I didn't always have the peace. It called Shia. I didn't always have mm. the love that I have now. Um, mm. I grew up, uh, my mother, uh, she was like our manager. I was a dancer mm-hmm. in the world. And uh, mm. she was our manager. And I had danced with my brother. So so it was like Joe Jackson and the Jackson, <laughs> and mm-hmm. the Jackson Five. So, you know, my family. So she pushed mm-hmm. me. She saw that I could dance. Now I'm still dancing for the Lord. That's another thing I do. But, uh, but mm-hmm. my, that's, in the world, so I grew up in the club performing. So you, you mm-hmm. know, so I, you know, at five years old, I'm performing. At twelve years old, I'm I'm performing for money at clubs that my mother used to take us to at lounges. Mm-hmm. Me and my brothers, and, mm-hmm. and my, and so you know, that being said, when you're raised in the world like that, you you, you know, it's I'm just being honest for for a celebrity or someone that's in the entertainment business, it's not easy mm-hmm. to. To, to tell them about the Lord. Uh, what I mean by yeah. that, it's not easy to win them to the Lord because they mm-hmm. want to understand 
can your God do for me what I'm getting now? Come on, teach and so, and so when so years went by, and so as I got in, um, uh, in my late teenage years after I finished high school, so um, a door was opened to me in the entertainment business where I went to dance for Ice Cube. And so when mm-hmm. I went to Hollywood, I went to California. I was called to California and I to dance for you know uh, you know celebrities and all of that. So I was I was calling myself living a dream. But when I got to the dream, I found out that the dream really could not satisfy. Mm-hmm. And so I understand to be like the woman at the well who had everything and 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 was thirsting for the wrong water. But mm-hmm. I was thirsty. I didn't understand that I was thirsty for God and nothing else can feel the thirst when I got up there, even though I was with celebrities and in hotel, uh, uh, hotels and nice hotels that they would pay. They would pay for me to perform. They would pay. I was in limousines that looked greater than most people's mm-hmm. houses. And, you know, mm-hmm. I was traveling, hanging out with celebrities, going to movies with Genuine and all these people. And I'm not saying mm-hmm. it's to build them up, but I'm saying it, it was my life. And so Mm -hmm. when I got there, I understood that I saw then that that was not the thing that could fulfill me. And Mm -hmm. so so God began to speak to me in dreams. This is how Mm -hmm. the Lord kept touching me. And so I'm like, so it was kind of like a Jeremiah uh, calling. See, when you're called to God, God is going to call you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You're going to know God and not man. Mm-hmm. It's a difference. See, and this is why he said yes, in thanks. Jeremiah, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before that came as forth out of that wound, I sanctified you. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And mm-hmm. then Jeremiah answered and said, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. And so a lot of us, when we get the call of God, we don't we don't have the uh, security. We don't have the attitude. Well, I can do this, and mm-hmm. God was saying, "Listen, shut your mouth. What I'm going to do is put my words in your mouth. I'm going to mm-hmm. I'm going to give you what to say, and I want to and I want you to be led of what I tell you to do." And so what we have to understand is that when you're called of God, God will call you. You will know it's the call of God because you understand it's not from man. It's not from the pastor. It's it's not from it's not from the prophet who comes to prophesy to you. God spoke to me in a dream. He said, I want you to prophesy to my people. Now, I had no idea what that meant, woman of God, because I had not been to church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so to learn of these things, now I now I went to go to a church, a Baptist church, to get baptized and to be saved. Now we are called. The Bible says that we are called, Amen, unto His purpose, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. And it says that we are called to a holy calling. And so mm-hmm. that's why he said, I sanctified you. So when God called you, he takes you through a sanctification period. And this is what he had to do for me when I came up out of the worldly system, because the worldly system is so much different than the church system. So I had to, I had to die to my own pride and to the worldly system. I had to give up the Lord May, uh, had me to give up worldly music. He, I, I would have never thought that in a billion years. If you had, a, if a okay. person had told me that, I would have said, "Life for, for this, you a liar," you know. But the mm-hmm. Lord had me to give up everything that I loved of the world, and He sanctified me and gave me the love of Christ. Wow! And you know what I love about that is because you said a few things that I wanted to touch base on, and it's so key and important for this hour. And that is that we recognize that we have been taught to go to church. But when the Lord calls you, you can be sitting in a church or you can be in your bedroom to you, and he reveals to you his perfect will. And in that, he allows you to grow through it as you did. He will send across your path who you need. And listen, what I love about it, it, it always will manifest what he said. 
you said it also was a process. It took time. So uh, for a lot of people that feel, listen, I'm going to go to church, I'm going to do this and this, and I'm going to give myself a year, and maybe you've been taught you're going to be trained. And this, But see, nothing means anything without the anointing. So here you have this process and anointed, which is what destroys the yoke. And I love that you said something key. You had everything, but it could not satisfy you until you found the Lord. I want to also say, I know you to be a woman of God and the prophet is. We had never, ever met. We were at a service, and in this service, you came over to talk to me and my husband. We had not released anything, and the administrator had talked to anybody that night, and you spoke directly in to confirm the things the Lord had been sharing with us. And for that, we forever love you, not because of the prophecy, but because of your obedience to fulfill what the Lord had told us. And I'm telling you, when you're in that transitioning space, the space where you're where you've heard the word and it hasn't manifested, we know a lot goes on. You experienced it when you left Hollywood and you came back or however God did that thing. But here's what I know. In the midst of it all, the word that he gave you, my sister, was for me and my husband and many that you have ministered to. So I honor you for your obedience. Like, oh, listen, like Isaiah, you said, here am I, send me. I want you to share with the listening audience. I know you travel. I know you do quite a bit in the kingdom. Would you share with them how they can get in contact with you and any information regarding any upcoming events, perhaps how it is that they can obtain your product that you have as far as your uh, music, uh, share with them how to get in contact with you, and any upcoming information, and then we'll follow up after that with one last thing before we close out for your interview. Amen. Amen. You you guys can reach me through Facebook Messenger, and that's under Dr. and it's D-R, Kanoi, K-A-N-O-I, Tamika, T A M. I-K-A, and that's Dr. Kanoi Tamika. You can reach me through Facebook Messenger uh, uh, just to ask me what, what's going on, what's next for me, and I can, you know, maybe you can send me a friend request, and I can just show you guys what's coming out next. Um, my music is not coming out to next month. Um, definitely, mm-hmm. um, I'm preaching, uh, you know, different places. Um, also, this year I will do a, a On the Forces conference where I will teach about uh, 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 spiritual. I would teach uh, about spiritual warfare. Uh, things uh, we we want to know uh, the things about how to recognize witchcraft in your life, breaking curses. So these are the things mm-hmm. uh, uh, we attack. You know, in spiritual warfare, we're going to train. I, I want to activate and equip people, and not just give you information. But I want to I want to mm-hmm. activate people that they will learn how to hallelujah be armed and dangerous in the realm of the spirit. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. I want you to speak to the audience that's listening in. Perhaps they have gone the walk that you've been in. Maybe they're in the entertainment field or, have, or in transition, or perhaps they just need a word to hold on to. Would you please share with them a nugget to continue to hold on in times like today? I know Many people are fearful of the pandemic. They're fearful of a lot of things, but our God reigns. Would you share with them on today as to give them a nugget to hold on, perhaps your favorite scripture, whatever the Lord puts on your heart? Well, first of all, you open up about the call. And I want to say this is why I brought up Jeremiah, because many people struggle if they're called or not. And so what the scripture was saying is that, if if you're saved, if you're saved, if you claim Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are called. Amen. But you're called Amen. to a holy calling. And that you and listen, mm-hmm. that you are called as priests and kings. Amen. Unto the Lord. Mm-hmm. And what does a king do? A king they they rule. Amen. 
So God has mm-hmm. given us to be property managers in the earth realm. Amen. That the earth mm-hmm. is the Lord's, but He has given it to the children of man. Amen. So we have the mm-hmm. right to bring the kingdom of God into the earth realm. And so I want you to know because you're saved and because you're called as a king and a priest that anything that's no weapon that's formed against you will not prosper, but you have to operate as king and priest in the earth realm and take authority Mm -hmm. over everything that's trying to take authority against your life. If anything is a barrier uh, coming against your life, trying to stop your progress, trying to stop your success, trying to stop your ministry, hallelujah, uh, uh, things were a uh, uh, demonic mental stronghold, you have the authority as kings and priests, amen, to, to take authority over those things that's trying to take authority over you. Because why? You are graced to do it mm-hmm. because you are a Christ, because Christ saved you to take authority. He gave Adam dominion over everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God wants you to operate like he would if he was in the earth realm. You are God's ambassadors, and you have the power and the grace to succeed. You have the power to break through every barrier that the enemy has thrown in your eyes. And that I, I decree, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that he that began a good work in you will perform it. But you're going to have to be a king and decree a thing yes. and it shall be a this nothing will be released if you don't release what's in the heavens in the earth it's time for you to open up your mouth and not complain anymore and not be sad and take whatever the devil throws your way but it's time for you to take authority as the king and priest of of the of the earth that God is giving you, do not lay back and do nothing. But you are to open up your mouth and decree a thing, and it shall be established. Release the kingdom of God in your mouth. Now the second half is a priest. Mm. A priest is to sacrifice, and this is what Paul said: I present my body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable. The call is also not to use your right. gift, but the call is to live holy. And that's what I'm going to leave you with. Amen. 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 Woman of God, I thank you so much for all that has taken place in your life. We believe and we mm-hmm. receive that God is doing a great and a mighty work in you. I ask that you just continue doing what thus says the Lord. We need you in the body of Christ. And we're so thankful that you were able to be with us on today on the Just For You podcast. May God bless you and all that you are doing. And we'll look to be in touch with you soon. And I pray that God's choices, this him, overtake you with all the things that he has assigned for you to do, that his perfect will will be done in your life. We love you, and we thank you for joining us on today. Thank you for having me. Grace and peace. Amen. Well, listen, you just heard from Dr. Noy, Tamika. We're so grateful she could be with us on today. Please look her up on Facebook. She's giving you her information. That's Dr. D.R., K-A-N-O-I, and then Tamika, T-A-M-I-K-A. Look her up, inbox her for more information. We are so grateful we have another guest who is a wonderful woman of God as well, and her name is Regina Webb. Regina Webb is a Houston realtor and also a nationwide financial consultant. We love her. We got to meet through our University City Senior High alumni page and just was excited about the things that God has assigned for her to do. So I would like to introduce the son and present to others none other than Regina Webb, and she is an alumni to both Kimmy Robinson and myself. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's such an honor to be with you. Phenomenal, powerful women of God. Thank you so much for the invite. 
Well, we just uh, are appreciative to serve and we thank them for your help. And one of the things that I know is that God connects those with servant leadership and those that have a heart to serve. And that is one of the most beautiful things I love about you. At the core of all that you do with all of the success that you have, you are a servant at heart. So for those who don't know you and and would like to know more about this grace just gift that God has given you in these areas. Would you share with them who you are and we'll talk about your faith and what God is calling you to do because you have something very key as well that God has assigned you to that is on the hearts of many people and I know you'll be able to assist them with that and we'll talk about that a little bit. So would you please share with them who you are Absolutely. So, yes, I do live in Houston, Texas, but I am from University City, Missouri, born and raised. Um, I'm a little bit opposite of the prophetess. I know. Woo, woo. Um, I'm a little bit opposite of the prophetess um, that was on the line earlier. I was born and raised in the church. My dad is a bishop. Mm -hmm. Uh, All I know is church, right? And so mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. me, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night prayer, Wednesday night Bible study, Friday night youth night, church, church, church. So when mm-hmm. you hear that there is a calling upon your life for me, mm-hmm. no, ma'am, no, sir. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't want to have anything to do with it because I was born and raised in it. Um, I was on the backside of it, I like to say, because I was a preacher kid. I saw the other side mm-hmm. of what my parents mm-hmm. had to deal with, the the, the, mm-hmm. the pain, the, the issues, the agony, the suffering. But, you know, you can't bleed in front of the, 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 the people of God. So you have shepherds mm-hmm. and uh, shepherds coming to the shepherd for help that are going mm-hmm. through situations and uh, mm-hmm. very little places that they can go through to, for help. So I didn't want to be a part of it. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I went off to college, you know, you, you feel the calling, but you fight that calling. Um, but mm-hmm. what I've learned to find out is when God calls you, it's not always to the pulpit. You know, a lot of times on. people are running to the pulpit because they, they see the, the glory of that moment of speaking mm-hmm. in front of people, but they don't realize that's but a, a short moment compared to the labor that God is really calling you to. And so what I found out is I did, you know, I, when I finally submitted, I did have a ministry, but it's more of a marketplace ministry. Mm-hmm. I don't have to be in the, in the pulpit to help deliver mm-hmm. some people. And so God has mm-hmm. given me the opportunity uh, to be, uh, I say, a slash between Moses and Harriet Tubman. I am free, <laughs> so I'll go back and get other people free. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so talk to us. How did you get into real estate? How did I get into real estate? So I got into real estate, honestly, because my initial service that we'll talk about in a little bit, that I provide Mm -hmm. 98% of the people that come to me that need my service, their reason for it is because they want to buy a home. And so for me, Mm -hmm. it only made to go the next step and get my license and further assist them through uh, the process of, of achieving their goals. Mm-mm-mm. And so uh, God sent you on a different assignment. And what I love about him, you said something that was very needful to be heard and said, as our dear sister, Dr. Knorr, first of all, you were in the church. So you knew, you saw, you experienced experience all of these things. It wasn't that you didn't want God. You just didn't want what you had seen. But yet your heart Mm -hmm. was conditioned. So now he's taking Mm -hmm. you to college. You find this wonderful career. And then you find that people are suffering because what they see that they desire and want, they can't get it. So God now has put you in a marketplace ministry where you sit down and you help them to figure it out. Would you share with the listening audience what exactly that is that helps them not only be able to get a home, but to get their lives in order? And I'm going to share it to you a little differently from my own perspective of my testimony, if you don't mind. 
Um, yes, so please. I was the same way. I was struggling. So the thing is, she, she mentioned, uh, Lady Wright mentioned that I am in the financial literacy space. Well, I am yes. in the financial literacy space. However, our flagship product is credit restoration. And so yes. um, I was a product of a product. And how I even got to this point is because by trade, I actually am an occupational therapy assistant. I do home health therapy. Uh, the, mm. the business was booming in home health therapy, doing very, very well. Mm-hmm. Well, the state of mm-hmm. Texas in 2018 and 2017, going into 18, desi- decided to vote and cut our pay by 30 percent. Wow. So right before that, yeah, that's why I took a pause, because that was traumatic. Uh, right before that, my husband came to me and said, hey, you know, I heard about this company where you, we can get our credit together. And um, if you wanted to be a consultant, you can actually get paid by telling people about it and also getting your credit together. And I was not positive. Now, this is an example of God bringing a rod and a provision before a famine came. And I was mm. not receptive. I was not receptive. He brought it to me, and I said, no, you don't know if that's legit. You don't know if it's going to work. Uh, you're not going to talk to nobody because you're an introvert, so just get your credit fixed and don't worry about the other side. But thanks be unto God that that's the first time that my husband didn't listen to me. <laughs> he, did it behind my, he did it behind my back lady, right? And so he got wow. started, and the first customer that he started using the services on behind my back. You have to understand, my husband and I have been best friends since fifth grade. Been, uh, uh, I've been yeah. knowing each other since fifth grade, best friends since we were 14. So, you know, he tells wow. me to come sign something. I'll just sign it. I don't look at it. I trust him. So not knowing that I was actually signing my dispute letters, Lady Wright. And yeah. long story short, in two and a half months, my credit score shot up 92 points. And I'm like, what wow. in the world is going on? And so then I found out he got started. He used the services on me, and I got results. But, see, the thing is, mm-hmm. no, my husband wasn't going to talk to people, lady, right? But God knew I was. And so mm-hmm. because I saw results, I started telling people about, hey, you don't have to live like that. You can get your credit together. There's an answer for your problem. And in doing so, here comes, again, back to the state of Texas, cutting our pay by 30%. And so in 2018, uh, that's when that cut took place. And so a lot of my uh, uh, colleagues, I know a couple that did bankruptcy. I know one that got a repossession. A couple people had to move. It was just traumatic for us. But because Mm. I opened, uh, because I had this other stream to help people, just help people. What happened was I didn't have to move from where I live. I ended up uh, being able to get a new car. Uh, if anybody has children and they're in extra, extracurricular activities, you already know that that's a whole paycheck by itself. And I had three kids in extracurricular activities. So uh, God mm. provided he, he gave me a rod of provision before that famine. That 30% pay cut was coming, and I genuinely was just telling people out of excitement that now I'm free, Harriet Tubman, let me go get us free. Come on. And so that's what I did, and God made a way when everybody else was falling, 1,000 they fall at your right and 10,000 at your left, but none should come not be. It did not affect my home. And so... That that's just my testimony to tell you how I got here. Um, I was a product of the product. I used the services, uh, and it changed my life. And the and to be able to be in a position where you literally are delivering people from bondage because that's what poor mm-hmm. credit is, high debt is, uh, all of that is bondage. Um, then you know it, it's a, it's you you really you understand very quickly that that's kingdom ministry. That's still yes, ministry. Mm-hmm. And you know what I love about it is like you mentioned um, Harriet Tubman. I hear some exits on the line if you are um, in the background or have your phone unmuted. Would you please mute your phone if you are not the guest? Thank you 
Um, I wanted to say that your ability to help is amazing, and this is what I want to share with you. So I saw the new movie, Harriet Tubman, and I'm telling you the tears fell just to know when the calling is on your life to help someone else to become free. And um, in listening to you say that and helping so many other people to get free, I know it blesses your life because not only are you sowing a tool for them to create and be able to do more, but you're also working it out where they can see how they will continue to be free once they utilize these tools. So can you share with people, I know there's a success story with you. What is your rate? I heard you say 98%. Did I hear you say that? Of people that you serve, that they are able to uh, get their lives back in order with the guidance that you give them. Is that correct? So the 98%, I, I mentioned that when uh, I was saying how many people were coming to me to purchase. I would honestly yes. say, Lady Wright, that if you are coachable, if you do exactly what I tell you to do, then I guarantee you that you will get results and see excellent credit. Because the thing okay. is, number one, we want to talk credit and financial literacy in school. That's number one. And number two mm-hmm. is once you learn that there's a game to this credit thing and you learn mm-hmm. to play the game, you're guaranteed to win. And see, the, the beautiful mm-hmm. thing about our services is it's not just credit restoration. Our company is mm-hmm. so intent on breaking the generational curse of financial li- uh, ignorance um, that, number one, if they are allowed, they will go into the school and educate children on the, from the ages of 8 to 18 on the matters of credit and finance. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know about you, but my poor credit issues happened when I went to college. And I got that free yes. T-shirt, free backpack, just signed here. And I got a credit card and had no idea how to handle the credit card. And so what Come they're on. trying to do is break that generational curse of ignorance before they get there. And if, if you allow me, I'm going to tell you my daughter's story a little later on uh, when she turned yes. 18, what I did for her. Um, and then mm-hmm. also, not only do they do that, uh, our company, because it's debt free, they um, have a scholarship. It just ended in January 31st. Uh, if anybody's on here, if you got a high school senior next year, college freshman, Definitely keep in touch with me because our company gives away $600,000 in college scholarships. Mm. The top person last year got $30,000. My daughter applied mm. in 2020. Uh, it was 2020 or 2021. I can't remember. But last year, she got $5,000. And all you do wow. is do a five, you know, it's not grade based or anything. Um, so mm. if you want to find out about that, I'm getting excited. So I kind of get off. Pray for me. Um, but if you, you want to learn more about that, you know, let me know. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's just that we go out there. I look at it like this. The Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. But the thing is, if mm-hmm. number one is not going to fall in our lap. That's number one. Number two is T.D. Jakes preached it best. He said, can you stand and be blessed? The thing is, God is not going to pour out wealth on you if you don't know how to handle it. So back Come to on. our protection plan, back to our protection plan, not only are we credit restoration, but they're going to teach you how to save. They're going to teach you how to budget. They're going to teach you how to pay off your debt. They have an identity monitor because once you get excellent credit, you're a target. Why? Because every two seconds, somebody's identity is stolen. So they're, they're mm-hmm. going to have uh, credit monitoring. They have access to credit attorneys to help them. They have so many. And here's a big one. Here's a big one. This is, I think, our best service yet, which is they have a real trust and medical and financial power of attorney. So while you're using these services, that service by itself is about five grand, but it comes with mm. your services. Get your house in order. I'm I'm so mm. tired of seeing uh, people fighting over grandmama's pearls. I'm so Come tired on. of seeing discord in a family because someone passed away. Why can't we be, be in that 
that moment of mourning and loving our loved ones and loving on each other instead of fighting over stuff. How can we do that? If grandmama get her house in order and write her will, trust, and medical and financial power of attorney up, those are her wishes that we now have to honor and can't nobody fight over that. That's excellent. And, you know, that is such a huge deal because if we all can be honest, how many times have we seen and we recognize that because of the need that people are going to go fund me pages. But these simple things help. I have a personal testimony as well. My husband and I, we got married. We were young. Uh, we had, my dad was one that was very financially astute. But here's the thing. We all have choices. So when we got married, we were so excited. We got credit cards, but we had to learn very quickly those credit cards can damage you because paying the minimum amount for 25 or 30, they're not telling you that on top of that you should really pay your balance off and get those things done. So here's what we learned real quick, debit cards for a season and learn to restore ourselves. But here's the other part, my sister. I honor you because this information that you are getting – is available. So there will be no excuse if you're sharing the podcast, sharing the podcast, making sure someone understands. Here's an opportunity to be able to get things in order. God does things in a beautiful way that's not stressful. So would you share with them, my sister, how they can get in contact with you for what you offer? And then also, would you share with us any upcoming, I know you have some things, even though you're in Houston, uh, I've seen some flyers, you're doing some other things. Would you share with us about your upcoming events and give them the contact information that you have so that they can get directly in contact with you to be able to talk with you about their needs. Yes, ma'am. And before I do that, you mentioned about debit cards and credit cards. Uh, yes, ma'am. And, and I'm going to go back to part of your question about uh, the success rate and when I mentioned about being coachable. The thing about mm-hmm. credit cards is we just don't know how to use them. Credit cards yep. really is the biggest and I say this with a lot of emphasis, it is the biggest key to getting excellent credit. You just have Uh to know how to use them, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to understand your credit is determined by five different components. And credit cards is one of the only things better than a loan, better than anything, the only thing that hits all five of those components every time it reports. And so the thing is, uh, I, when when people get started with me, I teach them in depth about credit cards, and I actually mm-hmm. encourage the use of credit cards. If your credit score is mm-hmm. not high enough for a credit uh-huh. card, we actually have a secured credit card where you can get started with that that reports to all three bureaus. We actually have services if you're renting to use your rental history. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go back two years and, and boost your credit score potentially 50 to 70 points just by using your rental history. So mm-hmm. we use different things that we, we're faithful with all the time to build your credit. But, but I want people to understand because, you know, growing up, we, we are taught to fear credit cards. Don't use them. Yep. They'll mess you up. Yep. It's only because yep. you don't really know how to use them and take advantage of them. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I teach my clients what to do, how to use them, how to take advantage of them, how to use them to help you uh, create your self-wealth, right? Uh, yep. Wealth is using another man's money. And credit cards mm-hmm. can be just that, and it does not have to hurt you. I just wanted to say mm-hmm. that. So how can people get a hold of me, and what do I have got, have go, going on? Actually, this Sunday we have an event, Classy Credit Kit, uh, this Sunday in Houston, Texas. If there anybody on here that's in Houston, um, you can contact me, and I'll tell you how in just a moment um, to find out where. Uh, we have Classy Credit Kit tours all over of the U.S., you let me know where you are. I'll see if there's a tour in your area. As far as St. Louis is concerned, I'm always open to come home and do financial literacy and credit education. Mm-hmm. It is my desire to get into the churches. 
I didn't talk about mm-hmm. that much, but I do have a passion for the churches uh, as far mm-hmm. as being able to educate the, the, the saints because that, there's nothing worse than it. This is part of me watching things than seeing people saved, set free, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost, but you still walking out and still struggling, still got high bills, still got high interest on that yep. five- and seven-year-old car that you can't pay down, and you still feel yeah. like you can't make it. The devil is a liar. And so uh, it is my desire to get in these churches and, and educate the, 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 the members, and not only the members. There are pastors that are struggling, but they can't say anything. Come on. And so it's my desire mm-hmm. to help those pastors as well get their credit and their finances together because what will happen if you get your credit and finances together? One, you now will be able to lower all of those interest rates because we don't realize a lot of our interest rates uh, are determined by our credit, your insurance, your premiums. Uh, uh, did you know that your your um, uh, you can get uh, your electricity, all of that stuff? They do soft pulls on your credit, and they, they, yep. you are being charged according to your credit score. And so it is imperative uh, that you get your credit together. Why? Because all that is is little snares eating at your eating at your money, little holes in your pocket, and you're not keeping your check. But once you gain excellent mm-hmm. credit, what's going to happen? You're going to have more money in your pocket, and you don't have to look at, oh, my gosh, do I pay my tithes and, and give my offering, or do I get these groceries? Either or, because that's what it is for most people. They, they, they don't have the faith to be obedient because they don't uh-huh. have enough money. But if you get excellent credit, you will have more money in your pocket and you'll be able to build the kingdom. You will be able to fund whatever the ministry and the mission for your church is and Come go on. into the world to, so that the gospel can be preached. Why? Because you got more money in your pocket in the pews and in the pulpit. Now, uh, other, that's, all, that's, that's my answer to your event. I'm available. Mm-hmm. Book me. I will come and speak mm-hmm. to your church. Uh, and so mm-hmm. how you how do you get in touch with me? You can find me, of course, on social media, on Instagram. My Instagram name, name is B, the letter B, and then Web, W-E-D-B, Solutions, all together, B, Web, Solutions on Instagram. My name is Regina Webb, B-R-E-J-E-A-N-N-A, last name Webb, W-E-D-B on Instagram. And also I do have B, Web, Solutions on, uh, on Facebook as well, excuse me. And you can call me directly. My number is 832-566-9207. Again, that is 832-566-9207. We can schedule a free consultation and, and, and come up with a plan to get you uh, from the bottom to the top, from the head to the head, uh, as I'm God on. has called us to be. Kingdom ambassadors, the church should look far better than the world, and so that's what I'm Come here for. And you know what? I'm so grateful, and like I do want to go back and say, you know, that was at the beginning of our marriage, but I'm telling you, everything you're saying, I know to be true, and I thank God for you. And I wanted the listening audience to hear it uh, because. It is so true, so often, and this is the reality of where we are in the world. Even more recently, when my husband and I went through something, you know, I have um, no problem with GoFundMe, but we know also our God is able, and these are tools that can help to deliver people from where they Mm -hmm. are. And I thank you, my sister, for your passion your heart, you know, I love you genuinely. I'm so grateful mm-hmm. that our paths are and I'm looking forward to hearing. And I told you I was teasing, but I'm not teasing. I just knew when we were communicating that I, I felt in my spirit a, a new location for you for your services that you offer, whether it be real estate or what you're doing. So I'm looking to hear that. Okay, I'm going to say Amen. it again. The gift on the inside of you is calling for greater, deeper depth. Um, and I appreciate Amen. what you do in the humbleness of spirit that you have. There are a lot of people with wisdom that do not share it. And um, they can be in various entities. But I love that you and the guest earlier, Dr. Uh, Dr. Kamoy, uh, Tamika, she and you are giving, loving people, and this is how people will know our Lord lives. So thank you for being with us on today. Listen, you have heard a mouthful.
full on today with these beautiful women of God. Listen, I'm so proud of each and every one of them, and I am looking forward to hearing praise reports. Um, you have been ministered to on today, and I thank them for sharing of their life, their faith, and all that they are doing for the kingdom of God. And listen, you can too be blessed. So I need to keep saying that because sometimes we look at our life situation and believe there's no way out. But on today, God is giving spiritual knowledge as well as natural wisdom to show us how to be free. Now, listen, if this is your birthday month, and this is the month of February, the love month, I want to say we celebrate you. Perhaps it isn't your birthday. Maybe it's your anniversary. Maybe you're just celebrating Valentine's Day. You've had a new baby or there's a new accomplishment. We want you to know here and just for you. And also at Elation Radio, we celebrate you. On the other end of the spectrum, we recognize that life is happening. And there may be someone going through, and there may be something you have heavy on your heart, maybe a loved one facing affliction, a child may be in prison, maybe something has happened and shaken and rattled your world. We want you to know here just for you, Animation Radio, we are praying for you. I need you to know God is a supplier of your needs. He promised in Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you are in need today and you need natural resources, we have two very well in-depth organizations that are there to help you across the nation. One is United Way. Uh, in our St. Louis area, you dial 211. They will refer you out for the needs that you have. Once you give them the particular information needed, that they can assist you as best possible. In St. Louis, there is also the Urban League St. Louis, and we want you to contact them. Do not be filled with when you were going through. I often share when my husband and I went through a flood and we lost everything. Listen, we had to understand God took care of us. He met our needs. But at the end of the day, we needed someone else and more than what our families and different ones could do that did help us. But we needed help. And I want you to understand it's nothing wrong with being honest with yourself and saying, I need help. And we're grateful we did, and we still have a process back, but we are blessed. And I'll tell you why. We're living, and we have wisdom from God. So we thank God for that. I want you to continue to pray. Look to the kids from who come at your help. Recognize all your help coming from the Lord by God. Be encouraged on today. And as we do in each podcast, before we close out, again, please contact Dr. Panoy Tamika or our sister, Regina Webb, at B Web Solutions. Uh, I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed. These are women that are here to serve, and we're thankful for them. Now, I want you to know there is another information I'd like to share with you. And it says, do you know of any college kids that need a summer internship? They're looking for recent or upcoming college graduates for full-time positions. They will be serving as an opportunity with United Healthcare Development Program. You may contact, her name is Brandy T. That's B R A N D E E, capital T E A Y, and you can locate her on Facebook. And please send these students to her. She has positions that are available. She too is a New City alum, and we want to support 
those that have great things going on. Perhaps you have a community announcement. You can send it to me if you'd like to get that over. You can send it to Michelle well, uh, Michelle Rice. That is W R I G H T. Michelle is M I C H E L E on Facebook or LinkedIn. You can reach me on Instagram under His Blessed Girl Seven. That's His Blessed Girl Seven on Instagram. I will be happy to read your community announcement and um, let the community know what great work that you are doing. And for a job opportunity for youth as well as adults, please send those our way. We love <coughs> to share the information with you. Last but not least, we pray out because we believe that the answer to everything is prayer. We want you to keep in mind if you have a loved one, a friend, a family member that is in need of knowing our Lord and Savior, please be willing to share. God will give you the words to say. He will help them in their life, and we will see the kingdom grow by us utilizing our lives to sow into the lives of someone else. If you will, I would like for you to join me in prayer as we close. Again, I want to say thank you to our wonderful producer and CEO, Kimmy Robinson, and to all of you listening in. Thank you again for your time. I am excited you were with us on today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for all of the information that has gone forth over the airway. We pray and cover it in the blood of Jesus, that it will reach the ears that is needed to hear, that lives will be changed, someone will be saved and delivered, people will be whole because we are clinging to that which belongs to you. Thank you for reminding us that here we are for you to send us. We want to be used by you, O oh God. So we want your divine wisdom, your will to be done in our lives. We ask that you will provide for those that need provision, for that loved one who has to say goodbye. We're asking you to comfort them and give them grace. We're praying for the one that is in need of healing, oh God, mentally, physically, financially, whatever is needed, we know you can provide it. We pray for natural needs, oh God, that you will heal and to help in those areas. We thank you, God, for hearing and answering our prayers. And, Father, for any unspoken request, we ask that you take a hold of those as well, that you will help on today, God. We're crying out for help in the name of Jesus, that you will bless the fivefold ministry, God, those that are on assignment for you and those that are in process for assignment, that you will help them as well, that you will allow your perfect will to be done. We say thank you for everything, not just the good things, but every trial, every tribulation that has drawn us closer to you and those that don't know you to be drawn closer to you through the testimonies of the saints. God, we say thank you. And then, Lord, we ask that you will all give us strategy and wisdom on what to do in our personal lives, our professional lives, in our spiritual lives, that we may please you and that you may be lifted high and lifted up, that we can glorify you the more. Now, God, we ask that you forgive us all of our sins as we forgive others. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I thank you again for listening to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. We are grateful you took time out of your schedule. You can reach us here, Lord willing, every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. That's Central Standard Time and 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you again to our guests, and may God bless you. And for more information, you can reach out to us at Leading Right also, Leading, right, like you're leading someone, right, like my last name, W-R-I-G-H-T, at gmail.com. Until next time, God bless you, and may his power overtake you, and may you come to know him in a deeper way. 
is our prayer in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. You are worthy. Hey, sweetheart, I know you get depressed a lot. Don't get discouraged about the naysayers. Do what you do best. Let God move through you. Remember who's team you are. Have faith. Be encouraged. Love you. Wow. I got no shame in explaining how I really feel. A lot of people think my testimony isn't real because I'm practically deaf, but I got God's shield. I can't help the fact the man gave me mad skills. Say he was crucified, even talked about. I'm getting the same thing, but I just tune it out. Hearing aid failing, but I still walk. And when I take my hearing aid out, we still talk. He said, son, be fearless and be true to you. But be ready, because Satan really got his eyes on you. So I pray about it. And this is what I have to say about it. To Satan's face. Get ready for that dog fight. You try to take my life. I'm still standing here. You, I shall not fear. God gave me them superpowers. I'm too tall. Twin towers. You try to sneak behind my back, man. You a coward. You can try to defeat me, but he'll never leave me. I know you need me. Been trying to reprove me, but I'm on that God's watch. God fuck Pray hard. My defense is the Bible. I call it the Holy God. Face you one on one. I am one of God's sons. I don't need no weapons, no knives, and no guns. Fight you with my hand. Face you with God's plan. I will be the only one that will still stand. Let's go. You can try to push on me. And I'ma push you right back. See, I'm no longer scared. I love where my faith is at. I'm stronger than I've ever been I know you really don't like that I put all my faith in the word I'm ready for all your attacks I'm ready for all your attacks Ready for all your attacks